Welcome to the final session of this drawing course focusing on colour. Today we'll be looking at combining drawing with collage. If you look on the internet you'll find lots of examples of drawing and collage together uh, but they fall into three broad types. Um, these examples are the first type where what you've got is you've got collage creating an interesting foil um, against the drawing materials but where the, the collage is fairly random. It's just different surfaces which will create different visual effects with the materials. In contrast, here the collage is organized in such a way that it forms very definite shapes within the picture of definite objects. In these examples, although the collage may appear um, randomly organized, the selection of particular things, in these cases text, adds a layer of meaning to the picture. Drawing materials look different uh, on different backgrounds, so it's important to perhaps practice with the different backgrounds before you start. Um, you could work with different colored papers, um, these sugar paper is slightly rougher for example and the smoother cartridge, you might work with um, patterned wallpaper. As long as it's not too shiny, it can be quite interesting. Um, you could work um, with newspaper or anything else like that that's got a little bit of texture on. But I'd recommend um, sticking down a few pieces on another piece of paper and then just testing them out. So here we've got um, colored pencil disappearing very, very quickly um, on on the black, so not really showing up at all, um, whereas pastels and, and oil pastels show up much, much better. So I recommend doing a few little tests before you start. Here's an example from a previous class where um, each object has been drawn on a different type of paper. So um, white paper and ink has been used uh, for the skull, so it stands out very strongly red uh, slightly patterned wallpapers been used for the mask and then there's paper collage in the background which uh, the peacock has been drawn over and I have to say that the decision of having black in the background made it quite difficult for that to really stand out but very carefully zoned areas this by contrast Slightly more random, but there's an element of echoing of the jaggedness of the, the skull and the, the colours sort of fit in with those skull colours. This one, a little bit more fun. There's a, a bit of shape, um, sort of defined a little bit of the top of the head, but it's fairly random. Um, this was uh, based on a photograph of Geoffrey Rush playing um, Albert Einstein. But I've tended to do these quite um, random sort of things. I'm going to do something that's just a little bit more organized today, uh, just as a little bit of an extra challenge. This picture is, uh, is straight out of my sketchbook uh, from a trip to Florence. That's the Duomo in the background, a sort of very street view uh, look using continuous line and very, very uh, bold, simple colors just primary colours. I'm going to do um, a collage drawing uh, inspired by this using blocks of, uh, of coloured paper. Not my usual way of working, so let's hope it goes all right. But first of all, I need to address something. When I visited Florence, there was scaffolding up here. Um, so I, I don't really want that in the picture. So I'm going to do a fresh drawing um, along this sort of lines from this photograph of the Duomo from street level um, from the internet. Working from the photograph just out of camera shot and I could, um, if I wanted to, carefully sketch out a few of the lines so I get the perspectives and so on correct, but I'm not worried about that. I'm going to concentrate on the sort of things that interest me most, I'm going to use continuous line to, to draw them. 
So this will take a little while, just working my way around. So there's my continuous line drawing, uh, quite scribbly and so on. Um, and now I'm going to add colour. I'm using a very simple principle based on what we looked at last time. Um, keeping it to primary colours, I'm going to start with the uh, red of that roof. Locking that in. Uh, notice the pen isn't running because it was a biro. Blocking that in. I mean that bit there. And then I'm going to add the shadows. So to add shadow, I'm going to use blue. So where are the shadows? They're sort of down here, just in there. And a little bit in there, a little bit in there, just a little bit of blue to add the shadow. That's been a bit too strong, so I'm going to put a bit more red back in there, just blend it in a bit. Okay, so that's that shadow. The um, these buildings around here. Um, they're sort of, uh, they're sort of, I'll bring it in, they're sort of yellows in there uh, and pink. So I'm going to stick within that sort of colour range. Before starting my collage, I've done a little test with the materials I thought might be uh, quite interesting. So uh, I got from a, a pale uh, yellow, uh, brown sugar paper, colour paper, and um, some coloured paper cut out of a magazine. And what's interesting is, uh, particularly on the, um, the reds and the yellows, my watercolour doesn't show up very well. Um, and neither does the coloured pencil, but the pens seem to show up pretty well and the pastels show up really well. And this extra white line just there is a Tipex pen, which shows up on everything. So that gives me some idea about what uh, I can use uh, and what will be useful. So now I'm going to um, create a collage of my uh, image and then draw back into it. So here is the collage base for my collage drawing. Um, I've cut or torn the, the paper out and stuck it down with PVA. You could use the print stick, that would be just fine. Um, and I've made sure it's nice and dry. And now I'm going to work back into it. Uh, you'll notice it's all quite wonky and irregular. I have a choice. Do I now try and correct that or do I work with it? And I'll we'll just have to see how it goes. Um, I know from my test here that pastels and pens worked best um, over these papers, over the full range of papers, particularly the dark ones. So I'm going to start with pens and then and pastels, and then I might try some of the other things over the top of those. Um, the first pen I'm going to use is just a biro again, and I'm going to start to just draw back in 
that detail, making corrections as I go along. Keeping that, trying to keep the looseness of continuous line. So it might seem a funny way around it, but now that I've added some detail, I can see a little bit more clearly where the picture is. I'm going to start to add in um, some tone. Some people worry that uh, about you know, losing all that detail and perfection uh, because they want a, a, a drawing to be photographic, but I prefer something which is a little bit more impressionistic. So I'm now going to look for I keep looking back at the photograph and I look for um, the lighter areas and start to flock them in with some pastel, just sort of. So I've begun to add a little bit more detail and uh, lights and darks in there and I've just fixed it, the pastel so that I can work more effectively over the top of it. And carry on cutting in and trying to redefine those edges. And where I can't, I'm going to use the Tipex pen. To really add that extra little bit of lightness. That's coming on and to just start to sharpen up I'm going to move now the colour pencils. So I'm looking for areas to just sharpen and define a little bit. I'm going to leave that drawing at that at quite an impressionistic stage. I hope you enjoy this course and uh, this is the last session so please could you fill in a feedback form on our website um, to help show our funders that these courses are valuable. Thanks, bye bye.